Alright guys, welcome back to part 3 of my Shadowlands leveling guide. <clears throat> so now we are moving on to the next spot here. Um, and where you can see I'm using another Radinax. And here's some RP. Pretty short though. And it starts. So here we have to kill 12 mobs. And we also have to loot all these scrolls on the ground until we find the Locust Manual. So we're just airing all of these mobs down, pulling kind of a big part at a time to try to get down here. <coughs> I'm slow at pulling the mobs, it seems. So there's, uh, it seems like they are all sp like spawning in set positions. So I usually start at the right side, work my way to the left. Um, I loot everything as I go uh, and then I basically finish up in the middle and I should be done with everything. I did try to count how many of these things you have to loot before you get the uh, quest item, like how many scrolls, but it doesn't seem to be a set number. So you basically seem to just have to keep looting them, but it's usually like around 10. like. Yeah, like above seven at least. So you basically just... I mean, that's also why you, you really want to take a route around the place. You, and you just loot everything so you don't have to like cover a lot of ground to run back to places you uh, and loot things that you missed or something. And here you see I get it pretty fast actually. And we're done with both quests. So this run I did this quest pretty fast. So that's nice. And here I'm using the macro again, stay in this circle, use this, I have to finish channeling this. And then you see where he's running, or well, where both of them are running. So when you're done channeling this, you just go over there and you, you will turn in the quest and go into the next part. And the next quest we're doing here is actually kind of slow, uh, and you can't really do anything to speed it up, what I've noticed at least. You basically have to wait for 10 mobs to spawn here. And they spawn with about like, I guess, 10 seconds between them. And it feels like they start spawning faster, the more of the items you have. I'm not sure if you could potentially like cheese this if you're in a group to somehow like spawn more mobs. But uh, one time when I did this quest, there was one other player here who was not in my group and it seemed like the mobs did not spawn faster, so I think you just have to wait for the mobs to spawn. And there doesn't seem to be any mobs close by that you can kill while waiting. And since it's still not that long time you have to wait, if you walk away to kill something else while waiting for the spawns, I don't really know if it's gonna speed you up, probably not. And like I've said before, like, the more stuff you kill here, the earlier you're gonna overlevel. So I, I'm gonna mention, basically, the part where you do overlevel. Uh, if you run my route the way I'm doing it right now, you're gonna be dinging 56. Um, wait, no, is it 57? No, it is 56. You're gonna ding 56. Uh, before you're done with Maldraxxus. So there's th basically like f four parts of Maldraxxus. First there, there's one introduction part. And um, when you're done with the introduction part. You have to go to three different places. And do a quest chain at each place. So and the th at the third place of these places. That's where you end up being 56. And then uh, I think with this route. I'm getting reduced XP for about 8 to 10 quests. So I'm getting, I'm losing out on about roughly 1.5k XP per quest, between 1.5 and 2k. So basically, I'm I'm roughly losing about like 15k XP or something, which is pretty much what what an ex like what an extra elite quest here would give. I mean, the quest here would give like 20k. Um, but if I, yeah, it's like. What I felt 
the more quests I'm skipping, the faster my complete run goes. So I still think it's uh, you want to skip as much as possible and just not overlevel. Since you obviously also save time by skipping quests. Um, oh yeah, so on this quest you just jump down on the side. Behind that little circle when you're done. You have to click on three memory mirror things. So here is also a bonus objective that gives about the same XP as a quest does. Uh, and my way of dealing this is you kind of don't really want to skip it because you kind of do it as you go anyway. Um, so you're not losing really a lot of time from doing it. Um, because like, uh, okay, so during this run there's not really any mobs here so I kind of have to go a little bit off route to kill more mobs. But normally there's just a lot of mobs here so you're just gonna be done you're gonna be usually around 50% when you enter this cave here uh, and you pretty much can just kill the mobs while moving so it's not really a big time loss so I feel like this is not something you want to skip I also see the mobs drop a thing so you can click on these little tigers that lie on the ground so anyway, you get down in this cave for the next part. Uh, the mobs come here. You turn it in. And there's gonna start, uh, spawn this guy. That you just have to kill. Just kill him as fast as possible. And once he dies, he's gonna be become friendly. And you can turn in the quest. And you're gonna go out from here again. So, here we go. Alright, so now we're basically gonna locate two offerings. And as you can see, like, on the path as I go, there's gonna be mobs. So you don't, like, yeah, with this bonus objective, it's, it's not time loss to do it. It's just a bit of an XP boost. So when you get to these little offerings, uh, the, M the quest NPC, he's gonna walk down to it and start some RP and spawn a few mobs you have to kill. I've noticed that it sometimes bugs, so you have to walk back and then go to it again. Like, you get into the correct position, but he's not going on the on the chest, so... But at least here it didn't bug, so that's good. Hope it's gonna be the same on launch. And it's also a good time to pull a few extra mobs as you're waiting. And you see I loot it and I'm going I'm gonna go to the next place and yeah as you can see there's just quite a few mobs on the path as well so I'm killing this one and then I'm clicking on this and yeah you can see I'm almost done and it's going pretty fast and I have one more of the items so I can click that one as well so here I'm just pulling a few mobs it's gonna pull all of these around here to finish off the objective as I trigger the RP So I use meta here, and yeah, I'm just killing them pretty fast, and now I should be able to loot it after I kill these. And there you go, now you can see I can loot it, so I'm just finishing this mob off fast. And there we go. So what I'm doing here, this is also why I think Night Elf is such a good race for speed leveling. Because if you're in a situation where you're you have to run through mobs, but you don't want to kill them, like you see here, I just go through, and then I'm just gonna meld here. So I just reset them. So they don't interrupt uh, these cost bars. So you get into this cave. First you have to go to the left, and then the door to the right is gonna open. So you go to the left, you wait for the NPC. Once he gets here, you talk to him. He's gonna be here pretty soon. Can't do anything to speed this up either. He's gonna be in here in a second. There we go. He's coming. So when you talk to him, there's gonna be some mobs spawning at the entrance of the room. So you have to go out and kill those. I'm not sure if this is exactly like time-based. 
the time I, uh, the, this thing, but I noticed that uh, there's random witch types of mob spawn. These like cats that spawn are a bit tankier, and I think yeah, every wave that's spawning is two of these, which is kind of a shame. But like I said, I think it's time based, so I don't think it really matters too much. Because you're gonna see like in the middle of, I don't know if it's now or if it's on the next pack, you're gonna see that the quest updates so I can go in. Yeah, yeah, it's on this wave. But yeah, as you can see, I'm, I'm killing the mob so fast. There you go, it's done. And now I can go down here. And here is also important to manage them. So there's, I think it's, yeah, it's six, no, five places you can click on, but you only have to click the one in the middle. I noticed this, because uh, at the start I was clicking all of them, but then I realized that uh, it's always the middle one that triggers the next part of the quest. So there you can save some time as well. So I use meta to get out of this place. And uh, once I get out here, we're gonna gun shoes again. So now we're going to Heroes Rest. Which is a little town up in the sky. Where I also used to do... This. In this next part, um, there's a little bit of an RP. And in previous rounds, I used to take the time in that RP to pick up two elite quests uh, up in the town I'm getting to. And I jump down and do those two because they're really close. And that takes roughly two and a half to three minutes. Um, and the RP takes like... 20 seconds but yeah like like i realized uh i'm just over leveling way too early so i've decided to skip those as well this time um so i'm just keeping on with the main storyline so here you get to choose your follower so you talk to him then you go back and turn it in and now you can summon it so now i'm gonna summon it and you have to tell him to fix a beacon here. And as you can see in the mailbox, I have one charge left of the Radinax, so I delete it and get a new three charge one. Because here, in a little bit, you're gonna see me do a quest really fast. So, he activated the beacon, I clicked on it, and so this is the RP part. This is the place I used to take the elite quest and jump down. But, um, in my final route, I'm not gonna be doing those because even though the XP is efficient, I'm gonna be overleveling so much earlier, and in the end, it's just not gonna be efficient. Because even even though the quest gives a lot of XP, it, it's just not gonna be worth it <coughs> since you're gonna get less XP from quests and you also lose time doing these quests. So just staying on the main storyline. So now we're done with this place and we're almost done with the zone. So now we're just talking to this guy to fly up here. And in roughly a minute you're gonna see why I uh, want full stacks of Radinax control gems here. As a side note, this place is the Elysian uh, or Kyrian um, order hall thingy. So here's the, I use the first charge to get all the way up to the quest giver up here. Turn this in, trigger some RP. I think there's supposed to be a cinematic here, but they don't. I don't think they've added it yet. Okay, so here, I use one charge of the Radinax to get over here because you're walking through the entire town pretty much. So you have to click on all these these four words here you click on. And you have to wait a little bit because once you click on one, the quest text updates. And if you click on them too fast, it seems like it doesn't um, uh, update. You have to click on it again. Okay, so on this one, it's really important. There's going to be some RP once you click on it, but the quest text don't up doesn't update. Um... But what I noticed is you don't have to wait for it to update. You can just start running. So I'm popping the Radinax here to get all the way back to the quest giver. 
And I'm gonna have to wait a few seconds. I walk a little bit too far, but it doesn't matter because the quest text isn't updated yet. And here you go, you see. So there I basically saved a bit of time uh, not waiting for the RP. And you also see I have zero charges of the Radinex here, but I've decided not to loot a new one from the mailbox here because I know that I won't need it um, for the next part of the storyline, which is the last part of Bastion. So um, after I'm done with this next part, I'm gonna Hearthstone to Oribos and uh, I'll pick a new Radinex up there. So there's a bit of flying here. And I'm not sure if you potentially could do it faster by exiting uh, this flying. But um, probably not. You go pretty fast here. Like they, they fly in the proper direction instantly so. So, once you turn in the quest here, there's gonna spawn a mob pack. And I basically start on the right side to pull the mobs that spawn. And then I'm gonna go over to the left side so I can just group them up instantly. So I can kill them as fast as possible. So you see, I instantly have aggro, so they're not spread out. And they're all grouped up, so I can just A with them down super fast. And once you kill them... The NPCs will move forward. And you're gonna get three quests here. I think during this run there's one other guy doing the quests here. So a few of the mobs are dead. Which makes me have to um, take a little bit of a bigger route to get done with the quest. I think during launch I'm probably gonna be further into the story than almost everybody at this point. So I'm not 100 percent sure if it's gonna be if this quest is gonna be this slow. Oh yeah, and he also um steals one of my mobs a bit later, a quest mob, so I have to retake the entire quest. This DK here. And on stream I'm just praying for him to not go attack me. Because uh I feel like Demon Hunter 1v1 is not as good now as it used to be. See, with all the leech nerfs and with the blade dance nerf but yeah what I do here is you see I take a path around I start in the north part uh, you saw me loot the first item uh, this one quest I need three items I also see I looted this chest here usually chests are only worth it if uh, if they're like if you don't have to go too far away to get them because they give t about 2.5k to 3k xp which is kind of low is roughly like six mobs and once again like I'm talking with the, about the over leveling I'm just talking about the over leveling all the time but it's not that important to loot them here early on because yeah you're just gonna over level earlier so anything that takes you even remotely off path is just gonna be kind of bad and here somehow I managed to aggro level 60 mob I don't know if it's they're intentional to be here but yeah and also in this zone I recommend not killing these war beasts because you see I have a target that has 26k HP but um, I'm not really left with much of a choice here since this DK is killing everything else and here you see I'm looting the last item for this quest you just need to open one more cage here and oh yeah, uh, you don't need any keys for these cages. I mean, you probably noticed. So you don't need the blacksmithing keys here. It's gonna be one more quest later where you need it, but there's only two quests on the entire route where you need those. Anyway, here you see I'm almost finishing up. This quest takes a bit longer time than usually because of this other guy here, but that's uh, fine. I'm gonna kill a few more mobs here. I think, yeah, this pack is the last one I need, and I'm gonna be done. Just kind of a shame that I have to kill one more of the War Flesh Beast guy. Oh, 
All right, so we're done with these quests. And now we only have about four quests left in this zone. And yeah, you see here, you know, it's that the quest guy is stuck back here, chilling around. And I take that quest. So there's two quests now. And uh, here's another one with the quest item. That I'm going to be putting on my bar in a little bit. And this DK is right here with me again. Killing a few of my mobs. And also right here. So you, you're charging this little meter you see at the bottom of my, of my screen. By clicking on these crystals. That are like everywhere. Um... So you just want to take kind of the route I'm doing right now. Um, you just run uh, through this place, click all the crystals. And you also want to try to skip the mobs that are called bowmen. Because they are ranged. And you kind of only want to pull the mobs that you can group up easily. Um, even if, no matter if you're ranged or melee. Because if they're too far away, you're not going to be able to reach them with the quest item here. And you have to use it on 12 corpses, so yeah. Now I'm almost done. The route I'm taking in this place, you see I walk on the south side of this place. And I'm ending up on, yeah, by this mountain here at this pack. Because here you see there's three crystals right beside each other. Which is going to be enough uh, to finish the quest. So even though the, this death knight was here, I'm managing to finish the quest pretty fast. So that is pretty good. So I'm done with the first quest, and I'm just going to click on this. And we're done. I only needed two of them, even. This could be a potentially good place for the Rare Nice Control Gem, but I'm using gun shoes here. It doesn't really matter too much. And this is the place where... So the next quest here... Oh yeah, and here I think 54 as well, after 1 hour and 37 minutes, which is pretty fast. So yeah, on this quest, this is going to spawn waves of mobs. and a, uh, So two waves will spawn, and then this is going to spawn a, like, kind of a boss mob. And here, unfortunately, this DK tags the last mob. And I thought that you don't need to have the tag on it to finish it. I thought that once it dies, it's just going to trigger for anybody who has the quest. But that was not the case, so I had to abandon and take it again. Because uh, the mobs did not keep spawning. Actually, in hindsight, I think I could have probably maybe just talked to him again. We'll see if I try it. And if you can click the I'm ready thing again. Not quite sure, but... Yeah. So the mob is gonna spawn. Like, I'm not aggressively trying to get a tag on it, since I'm assuming that you don't need to get a tag on it, but... So, yeah, I guess that's why he gets the tag. So yeah, I mean, I'm losing a bit of time here. So you can see it's dead, but I did not get the trigger. Oh yeah, I, I can't even talk to him. So I realize I, I have to abandon it. So yeah, that's actually kind of unfortunate, but yeah, I'm used to killing the mobs pretty fast. I hope something like this won't happen on launch. The good thing with the launch as well is that most people who's going to be ahead are going to be alliance players. Since we have the 30% war mode, which means that we, uh, like, to progress in the storyline, we don't have to do as many quests. So probably all the people I'm going to see is gonna be other alliance players if there's even gonna be anybody around me so and obviously since how the tagging works if you're the same faction everybody gets the credit so i'm not really afraid of this happening then so after this we're gonna jump in the big robot Uh, 
and he's dead. So you use the spell number two. I thought I clicked it, but I didn't, so I clicked it here. But that was only like half a second or a second too late, so it doesn't really matter. So after this is done, you're gonna be dismounted and you have to talk to him and you take the next quest and you're gonna fly up with him to the island. And I think this is the entrance to one of the dungeons as well. <clears throat> I don't remember what it's called, but... Yeah. So now we're up here. We have to kill this elite. We're gonna get help from the NPC in the back. For some reason, I'm not aggroing him. So there we go. So right here, we're just gonna pop everything. Blow him up. And I think after he dies, I have 30 minutes left on my buff food. I think I'm gonna sit down here to refresh it again. Because you, you have to wait for a few seconds for the NPC to come who you can talk to to fly back. So yeah, here I'm refreshing buff food. And the NPC is soon arriving. So yeah, refreshing flask as well. And here is a kind of funny bug. It's not that scary for me, but once you click it, you face out of the quest area and there's level 60 mobs here. And if you're unlucky, you could probably aggro some elites and potentially die. You see I'm going down to like 75% roughly. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I, I've noticed that it, it it's not always like that. But yeah, that happened there. So be wary of that. I, I always just, as you could see, I popped blur just to make sure that I didn't die. So anyway, that's Bastion finished. And before we end this video, I'm still gonna um, go through the next little bit of, piece of RP. This intermission between zones is not that long. You simply just gonna go talk to... Uh, oh shit, I realized I went to the wrong house. Just popping gun shoes here. I'm not gonna need it for a few minutes anyway. So now we're just uh, talking to him, listening to some RP. And then we're gonna open the portal to Maldraxxus and go to that zone. But yes, you can kind of see the way I'm doing stuff pretty fast um, in this run is that I'm just using a lot of Radinax control gems, a lot of gun shoes. Just using Fell Rush and Vengeful Retreat on cooldown when I'm moving between um, areas. Uh, as you can see, I'm, I haven't really been mounting at all. I probably haven't mounted more than like five times through the entire zone. Because any area where it's probably worth mounting when you're gonna run a slightly longer distance, I'm just using any movement speed item instead. That have higher movement speed. So here we're done with this quest. And I'm just gonna go back to the mailbox here. I kinda I keep losing myself in this town, like forgetting where everything is. So you take the portal up here, and we're gonna activate the gate to Madraxus. So in a few seconds we're gonna end the video. And then we're starting on the next one. And just, as you see, the timer, I've done the Maw and I've done the entire Bastion. We're 1 hour and 44 minutes in. Just about to start Maldraxxus. So it's, it's decent pace, I think. So here's this done. Kind of slow to activate. But there we go. And we're flying. So thank you guys for watching. This was part three of my uh, leveling guide series and I will see you guys in the next episode. Thank you. Thank you.